Pisces. Okay, let me tell you something. I feel like I'm in the middle of a transitional period right now, or I'm transitioning or alchemising the person I used to be beforehand. If I sound a little congested, that's why, because I spent all day sleeping, because my throat itch, and I keep coughing, and it's annoying, and I keep smelling cinnamon in the air. Yeah, cinnamon has a smell. Like, I smell cinnamon or whatnot. A lot of it. And it's a couple prim it's a couple visions that came through and why do I keep smelling cinnamon? Um, and then I see coconut oil, some water, some lemon drop. Like you squeeze a lemon for the lemon juice and some vanilla. Okay. And there's a, a jar or something like that. And then there's this nectar, clear nectar stuff. It looked like honey thick, clear, like the stuff you feed an elderly person who can't drink regular fluids. They gotta drink honey thick or nectar thick. It looks like that. But it looks like honey thick. And then somebody wrote a piece of paper, wrote on a piece of paper, shut up, like shut up. Like, but the U looked like a square instead of the U being like uh, um, an oval shape. And they put it in that jar. And then, I, and then the other premonition is somebody's baby got into some cinnamon and they're, they wonder why the baby keep coughing, you know, or choking or coughing in some kind of way because they got into cinnamon. It got in their nose or it's in their throat. They need to cough, they need to drink something. Okay, because they're choking. Guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. I'm eccentric, Rock Star C, and I'm a little under the weather, but this is propelling me to say something. Okay, even when you don't feel good and you're sleeping or getting the rest that you need, um, you can still receive like a lot of different downloads and stuff. But keep in mind, take what resonates, leave what does not. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Then I also saw someone asking, like, why should um, I don't see like your videos, like. They don't come up on the feed. Like, you got to like them. You can, y'all got a lot of people who watch your channel or people who's observing you and don't like your, or don't press the like button. You press the like button, increase the algorithm for more people will see it. But then that's the whole point of me keep smelling. It could be a correlation with smelling cinnamon. Somebody doesn't want you to talk. Somebody wants to shut you up or somebody wants to shut you down. And then I saw someone that's a little jealous. I see um, somebody with an open heart full of negative feelings. And it's like, they don't pay for you to open your heart because your heart is full of negative connotations. Like you want somebody who's a truth teller to stop talking. Okay. What does that say about you? Somebody's hypocrisy is a, at a higher level than what it needs to be. We all have hypocrisy, but somebody's hypocrisy level is like at an all time high. It's like you throw somebody to bond and they find fault and they catch this. Like, you don't want better for yourself. Someone's realizing that the people that they're hanging around has a lower vibrational or realize why they're low vibrational. You have a low self-esteem. It's like, you're not doing that great by yourself, but nobody's perfect. It's room for improvement for other people. But then there's also you just wanting to be negative for the sake of just being lazy. You should, someone's realizing somebody some people that they're hanging around or family members or a counterpart, what have you, but people that's been giving them advice don't really have the same drive, don't have the ambition to bring in life, like I, that they, the things that they think is better. But when you think about it, it's like for somebody to want a truth teller to shut up, it's like you look, it makes somebody, it has a sudden realization. It created a tower for somebody because they, they just may not have said too much initially when they heard the person say the things that they were saying, but it's just making them look at the person like, you I you don't have ambition. You don't you have laziness. You know, it's like now that I think about it, what do you do for yourself every day? And is it, it, the things that you do for yourself every day you don't take much effort to do that. So that they, they realizing this person doesn't have a lot of ambition. They don't have they feel gut punched. They feel played. You know, they feel aggravated <clears throat> with people or the people or persons that they are hanging around and then you want somebody to shut up. Why that person got to shut up? At least that person, you know, it takes effort to be on a, a platform and speak to somebody to be able to say something that you know in your heart to be true or was true for you that could resonate for other people. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you got somebody who's kind of stuck in transition. So they realize the person is stuck in transition. And then they realize the person that they, they the person that the other person wants to shut up is the truth teller. But now it's like bring it full circle. It's like the person who, the person whoever is in your life that that tells the truth is like I should have never shut that person out for for being exactly what you need them to be. You can't. It's like somebody is realizing the faults in their ways. It's like I have attracted a lot of people who lack ambition, who just don't who want to lie to kick it and be two faced. I was two faced because I'm hanging around people who lie to kick it, and then I get around this person to act like I'm so rigorously honest. 
someone believes they're worthy of feeling good. Someone took a stand for themselves. Like, I believe I'm worthy of feeling good. And I think that's the person that was the initial truth teller that get that gets cussed out. It's like the one relative that you think just because they're drinking or, or they just like to speak their mind a lot that they're blamed for being more controversial and dramatic and more, more over the top, more extra than necessary than the situation needs to be. But in actuality, they're just telling the truth and the truth is hurting. Someone went into retreat and they, they turned their phone off. Because everybody who wants to come that, to that truth teller's way, it's like someone, now someone wants to bind you. I feel like the truth teller would be you, Collective. I'm talking to you. Someone wants to bind you or is angry with you for choosing to be to feel better about yourself or not talk to them because that makes that, that feels better for you or just not letting them eat off your energy or drain your energy because that's better for you. Okay. I feel like you're in the middle of a transformation. Anytime I go through a transformation personally, I, I go under the weather. I don't know, my white blood cell count just gets way too high. I get hot. I get clammy. I start coughing or sneezing. Everything. I got a headache. You know how you, I get those sinus headaches where you kind of feel your footsteps as you take a step, you feel it in your face like that. You can't be doing too much when you feel like that. So you have to sleep it off. I feel like a lot of it is just shedding of the skin or a transform a butterfly, a caterpillar going into a butterfly. Transformation. I feel like you don't even think about, you just dismissed everything because I feel like you've been working with someone and showing them love and showing them respect and they they betrayed you or betrayed themselves by going by alienating you, isolating you, sitting with a group of people who talk the worst about you. You've been hearing a lot of crazy shit about yourself or people have been saying a lot of crazy shit about you, calling you uh, promiscuous, friendly, explicit. But until it's like someone who may like have feelings for you and they haven't made it publicly known, they're, he they're hearing things about you and, and they're jealous. So they're saying insulting things against your character or assassinating your character, surviving the person who's speaking against your character Go watch your little Peterson, y'all. I keep promoting this man's channel because he makes me laugh a lot. But uh, nonetheless, this person is getting jealous. But the reason they're jealous is because they feel that way about you. They feel you are their true love and they don't want to tell the truth to you. It matters that they tell the truth to you. They haven't told you. So it's like, well, you're under the impression that you're single and you make friends every day. So, you know, some people are in the, it just looks, the, the, the lifestyle looks like a bachelorette or a bachelor. So it looked like the persona that you let on is like, okay, you, you smile in everybody's face. You, you're just going to like do me wrong or do me dirty or something like that. And that's not the case with you. If that person came forth and told you, hey, we're, I want us to be together and you accept it, nobody's going to be able to have a play in your face, but they have to come forth and make that publicly known. They haven't done that. So they're sitting in their feelings, jealous and feeling defeated and feeling like you're the player when in actuality they're just being dishonest. They're the ones being two-faced with you and they're being a certain way with you. And this is uh, quite a few channel messages. I've seen somebody sitting, sitting in a, a room. Somebody's house is colorful. They have white walls, but all their furniture pieces had different, a multitude of different colors. Like red, green, yellow, blue. Like it looked like a the rainbow. They have all these pretty colors. Everything is like real colorful. <clears throat> yeah, someone is in the process of just fasting. When I see somebody who's somebody's in retreat right now and they're fasting away from everything and everyone that they love, don't love, can't stand, don't want. Like you just so many energies are coming with you because you are two faced. You always knew this person was two faced because you have that heightened intuition because they live two different lifestyles. So now they feel like they have mud on their face. Why? Because they, they really have some kind of like feelings. They have a negative connotation about you. And now it doesn't pay for them to sit around people who talk shit about you because they're addressing their feelings. But it's because you really just stopped everything with them. You cut them short. Because you believe you're worthy of feeling good. It goes back to you being worthy of feeling good. It's like, I can't pull... Uh, Something feels unnatural about hanging with this person. Even if you think this person is somebody special or somebody of importance to you, like a, somebody from your soul tribe, but it's something about what they're struggling through. You didn't judge them for what they're struggling through. And something about what they're struggling through would eventually put egg on your face or leaves you in a position where it looks like you have dirt in your face because they're being two-faced. And now somebody doesn't want to do that anymore because you're on a spiritual journey and they feel like they're imprisonment. They're in prison. They're bound to somebody they don't want to be with. 
somebody doesn't have the self-esteem to stand next to you. So that's why a lot of things are playing out in a way where they're constantly feeling salty or constantly feeling defeated or constantly feeling disrespected or offended, maybe even having outbursts. Someone sits in their feelings a lot more than you know. I see someone trying to show up to your door and try to speak their feelings to you. And I see you in a different space in regards to what you want for yourself. And they, I see somebody taking it personal, like you're trying to play them or discard them or dismiss them. And they're, they know deep down inside it's not anything they convinced themselves. Someone let somebody speak real ill on your character and they didn't defend you. And even though you didn't witness the conversation, you could pick up on the vibe. There are people that are going to try to judge you for being authentic or speaking your mind, and they call you controversial. Well, they called you fake and phony, and somebody let them do that to you. I don't think you feel a way against this person. I just think you just want to do what's right for you. It's not about processing your thoughts. They may think about you a lot, or you may think about them or pick up on them thinking about you a lot or they try to telepathically talk to you, but I don't think you want to talk to them. Something about I don't feel like talk. I don't I don't talk. Something about I don't talk. I wrote that down. I don't talk. Why did I write it like that? I don't talk. So <clears throat> I don't know if it's a group of a group of you that just don't feel like talking to somebody, even though the love is not lost. Or something about with the cinnamon. I keep smelling cinnamon. That's what made me wake up. Like nobody's cooking anything. Everything in that, or at least nothing with cinnamon in it. Hmm. You could be picking up on somebody um, trying to, to shut you down or the algorithm or something is attempting to be shifted. In regard in, in at expense of you because somebody wants you to shut up. Somebody's jealous of the fact that you have a with you. This person has a platform to speak their mind where they they are constantly trying to mute people to control people. Like someone's real. Like somebody's realizing somebody is very stiff in real life, and it's just like somebody's scared to grow. Somebody operates in meanness out of fear and insecurities, and they're trying to smother this person into staying with them. It's like stroking, striking. Someone thinks they, they, someone called you, somebody could have, I actually hear someone saying that's a prostitute, somebody making up rumors or just making up shit like this person's easy, but I feel like your person aided them in thinking that because they didn't correct them and they said something that alluded to thinking that, oh, this person's a prostitute, this person is, um, is easy or something like that. And as in regards to why everybody is like interested in your, in, in you. You couldn't just be a people's person. You had to be a prostitute. Yeah, petty shit like that. Like, you're not it. Like, this is somebody who, you might be a person who stays in the house all day, but work around a lot of people. And because they see the perception that everybody gravitates to you, they think that you're some kind of a derogatory thing or sexually transmitted demon or something like that, or something stupid like that. But I feel like you're establishing a lot of deep connections with people. People establish deep connections with you. They like to bond with you because you give them a platform to speak their mind because you speak your mind. And that intimidates somebody into um, playing with cinnamon. I don't know if they did something or concocted something to make you shut up. But I don't think you're saying that. Okay, I don't think. Hmm. You might see people act funny towards you or start to distance himself from you or make people like not like you or something like that. Like you're starting to see that this manipulation shit is a, is a thing. Like people take that shit is serious, more serious than they take themselves with the manipulation sp spells and uh, like any kind of like negative, like derogatory, like attitude they have with themselves. They starting to like, they, they bleed it out on other people. It bleeds out on other people and they try to make you like you're one of them. People try to make it like this person is no different from me. You just fell for that person or something that person's doing that's, that's not different from me, which is a lie. This person know that you're their true love. So now that you're, you're led to fast away from somebody, meaning refrain from somebody, retreat from somebody, retreat from that person, place or thing, and leave them to deal with their shit. It's like tower after tower after tower with this person. 
place to think like something is not like uh, something's unstable or proven to be more unstable without your influence. Somebody likes the, the benefits of you, but don't like you, which doesn't make any sense. It's an insecurity. Like you're pointing out how low people's self-esteem can be. Okay. If you live by the likes, you'll die by the booze. Like if somebody dislike you, you'll they expect you to drop dead about it. Like if somebody called you artificial or thinks so, so tries to perceive or try to push a narrative that you're shallow, artificial, um, insincere, and authentic, and you say things you don't mean all the time. And people, and it's a test. Like people are starting to like back away from you or something like that, and they think, oh, because you're not getting any attention that it's going to make this person run away and hide under the covers, which is the furthest thing from the truth. It takes bravery to get up on a platform to speak your mind about somebody. And what it all comes down to is that this person was not the inspiration to get this person to be inspired. And uh, the, the premonition I got to just to back that up is my parents, like my, my parents were very fond of each other, but it's, a, it's, it's an illusion that that they are over each other when they're really not over each other. And you can tell by the way they treat people after being with each other, they treated everybody else different from how they treated each other. So they know each other to be a true love. They still have an open heart for each other. So I, I watched my, my father treat my step parents like trash, like the dirt under his shoes. They constantly were humiliated with mud on their face, metaphoric for being humiliated all the time with, through his actions. No commitment, no loyalty. He didn't go above and beyond for these people, for these um these other people like he did once did for my mother and my mother uh, is, was the same way. Well, is the same way. So in that, while it may be, while one of them may be more vocal about how they felt or how they still may feel about the other one, the other one created an illusion to hide it, but you see it through their actions that um, their true love is, is not with the person that they're with. So this person is, is this, the, whoever the, the counterpart is, is realizing it's like I was misused or dumped on to be a fill-in because this person, because the, the, the person, whoever your true love is or your counterpart is supposed to be, even though you may not be with them, they could be with somebody else, but they use a person to like dump, they, this, the person they're with could feel dumped on because they feel like, oh, because the, whoever that person previous, previously was with, and my parents was, um, common law married. So even if they're not legally married, they was at least common law married. They were together long enough to be, you know, for a commitment like that. And it's children that come out of it. It's like you, that person's not treated the same as that other person, but it's not for you to know how somebody's being treated in their private connection. I don't understand it. You know, it's like, I don't know how it gets out in the open, how this person treated their, their former person versus how they treat you. That's a mystery to me. Just like the women that went with my father after my mother, I don't understand how they sized, how he sized, they sized themselves up to somebody they've never even laid eyes on. So this could be a, a thing where somebody is looking at you as a threat because you give the platform for this person to be their authentic self or be their true self and their true love. And they could be, they're very happy with you, but they give off the illusion that you're anything wrong in a book. This person's promiscuous. This person's a prostitute. Not really. This person's smart as a fucking whip. This person's a cast me out, just like you're the cast me out. And they, they label you as a player out of fear, jealousy, and insecurity. But they let people think that because they want to deter the attention off of them really being in love with you. They want the people to stop attacking you. So now that they're like, they're reaching some kind of like breakdown or on some kind of break in regards to their feelings, they can't stand and listen to people talk against you like that anymore. Or people doing anything that cause you harm or bring you inconvenience or anything, any kind of disrespect to you and your family, they cannot stand to hear it from anybody because you are their true love. So it's a thing like that. A lot of people who, who envied my mother envied her children and they never even lay eyes on a person. A lot of things that they said and did to the, around towards her children they could never face her like that because she's a different breed. She, she carries herself different, a lot of confidence. They think she's arrogant. They think she's full of herself, but she's really just confident, honest, speaks her mind. I think so much of the influence she had on my father, a lot of the way well, my father's ways are, are from her, honestly, because he was more meek and modest and she's more bold and assertive kind of thing. But they were a lot alike in a lot of other ways. Like they, they complement each other very well. And that's what I feel like is going on here. It's like, 
it could be a person that they with. You could tell it's like, why are you like there? If you're dumping on a person, it's like you're not happy with that person. But that person may be there as a support system or trying to be a support system, waiting for you to love them. And all the while, they come coming to realize this person never loved me or this person is not going to love me the way I deserve. I feel I deserve to be loved because they love someone else. So this your counterpart could be realizing where I came from. I never want to think about the next girl because you made me forget about my ex girl. It could be a boy, switch it around. And now they see you as a true love because they could have come from a space that could have been like detrimental or devastating or just kind of hit their esteem a little bit hard or just you just a person who's very supportive in a way where it's like you give people space. That was the one element that everybody else don't know how to do. They don't, you just don't give them space to breathe. To con- it's an it's a emotional incompatibility. But you give them space to evolve, to grow, and you take the same space for yourself to evolve and to grow. And it's not a perfect thing, but it's somebody who's more, uh, more, more of a, a, I said, I hear a biological fit. (laughs) I don't know if it's a biological fit, but it's somebody who, who who go together better, like a child and their natural parent versus a step parent. You see the difference? But I don't think it's anything where it's like the person could be internalizing things where they feel like they're being mistreated in a way where they're actually not being mistreated. They're just incompatible. They're very different. And I feel like you are picking up on a lot of that energy or the energy was draining you to the point where it's like, I don't want to, I'm going to go feel, do something else with my time. I don't want to be with this person. I don't want to be around this person. I don't want to talk to this person. Okay. And now your person's feeling your absence and they're becoming very enraged and very angry, you know, because they're trying to find, figure out a way to bind themselves back to you where you can't leave. Or it's like they're operating from a space where they're accustomed to be around people who operate from that space towards them. They almost coming off like that towards you because you're in a space where you just want to feel better. You just want to be happy. You don't care about arguing. You don't care about fighting. Not that you ever argued a fault with this person. I don't feel like you did. I feel like y'all get along beautifully to the point where it's almost too good to be true, which will make a person question. It can also trigger a person. But what I feel like with your actions, with you in a space of, of one scene to be happy or only doing the things that make you happy or bring you peace, I feel like it triggered the person to step it up like 25 more notches. Like they're in such a low algorithm space, a low vibration. But what do you expect if you're hanging around other people who are low vibrational or things like that? You can't help the influence you have on people. Even if it's not your person, it's that you have a very positive influence on people and someone's trying to like shut you down or shut you up because they're insecure and they're um they're greedy. They're um and so it's a lot of ignorance. They're, you're being met with a lot of ignorance right now. And you can't they hide they're throwing stones and hide in their hand as a way and they're trying to punish you for something they can't do they don't for the inspiration they don't have over their own person it's not your fault it's not really your problem and i feel like you cut the ties because you're not around because the situation seemed like it's playing out where it's kind of like a lot of the toxicities are coming onto your doorstep you may not have given up on your person but you may be just like reevaluating what you need to be doing for yourself in a way where it's like you're not low algorithm so it never pays to sit around you know, waiting for someone. But what you want to do is go create life. Go create. I think you have a bigger dream than most people this person knows. And it's triggering them to get a bigger one. And it's triggering the people around them that they know they're not good enough with the illusion the mask is off. It's like no more cinnamon in a jar or something like that. I don't know. You don't want to make uh, false accusations or something with false accusations made against you or just the reason there are false accusations made against you is because something with cinnamon. I don't know what, what people do with cinnamon or what cinnamon spiritually is supposed to do in terms of like trying to control the narrative or blocking someone. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I got to look it up. But <clears throat> people may accuse you of being um, like them, unreligious, uncouth, disrespectful, unworthy. And they want, they want to see people treat you bad. They want to see people kick you while you're down. Like, they want public humiliation for you. But that's just ridiculous. It's not going to happen. Like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Because it's only this, all the things that are positive. If you're doing right by yourself, you know, you have a way to extend love to people because you pour into yourself. And my throat is tight. Very tight. And it's sore right now. So that is significant. It's significant with people just do not, they cannot take you. People don't know how to take you, and they can't take you. They cannot stand and look at themselves, look at the man in the mirror. Someone wants to blame you for their emotional outbursts. Okay? 
that somebody wants to hold you accountable for why they feel fucked up. And that's not for you. That's not for anybody to deal with, but that person who feels fucked up. We are responsible for your own feelings. We are responsible for each other's happiness. What else? Someone um, just kind of had a, a misconception about how things go in reality, how people should interact with people in reality. And the thing of it is, it's like, okay, so you, whatever, you, whatever your actions did offended someone else. And it's like, it's not for you to deal with that person feeling offended at all. It's for that person to be responsible for their own happiness. But instead, it could be like, you could be met with some ratchetness or something like that or some something to that effect. Someone thinks they're punishing you by trying to play God in your life or try to determine or, or persuade or practice the art of persuasion. Like they've always been like that. It's coming to the surface now that what somebody's doing to you, they now realize that, hold up, wait a minute, you've been like that. That's something you do to people, period. Like you, not who you say you are. If you're doing all this manipulative stuff to make people go against somebody else, like that was you the whole fucking time pushing people away from me. So now somebody's coming to realize that somebody could have been emotionally abused by way of mental, mentally abused too, and verbally abused by way of isolating them, a person from their family, like being with an abusive partner. It's like they want to make you feel like they are everything or trying to be your everything while alienating you from all your family and may, persuading you to think you should only listen to what I say or what they say. I only have your best interest at heart when in actuality they're trying to isolate you so they can oppress you in some way or another. And someone's waking up to that. Now that they realize you're not, your energy is not there or your energy is fixated on yourself or you're pouring into yourself or something like that. And it's making a person feel triggered or they're remembering things that you said or things that you taught. And it's like, it's true. I don't know how you know that, but it's true. Someone's about to hit their rock bottom. It's like they're going through a lot of towers and things like that. On the strength of your truth telling. So whoever woke me up out of my sleep, I think is someone, whatever the attacks are, you know, I feel like I should be shrouded in holy scripture. Okay. To let the person know they can't come in, but it's something you're doing. That's, that's not letting anybody in, even the people you love the most. You're not letting anybody in right now. It's time to retreat. And I feel like the devil's really busy like that. And someone's feeling defeated, like they lost out on it, on a th on something when they don't really know what's going on because you could be being really quiet right now. True love. Someone's head is in a haywire. My head is spinning. Mostly because I'm hot, but it's spinning. Somebody's head could be in a whole, it could be in a whirlwind. Like they feel like their head is in a blender. Like their thoughts are not clear right now. That could be manipulation. Or they just need to just center themselves. Or they don't feel like they're in a space where they can center themselves because your platform or your space or your energy was where they would come and regroup to go back and do this thing called life. And then they would leave. So maybe you are setting a boundary with this person. It's like, if this is really what makes you happy, you should stay on your ground and go public with it. If not, then you're setting boundaries with this person. If they don't feel like, it could be the algorithm. Maybe their person, their esteem is too low or something like that. But they know they have a recognition as to who you are, but don't feel ready to be with you. Whether it be financial, tangible, conflict of lifestyles, I don't know, conflict of uh, spiritual evolution. Sometimes you can sit next to a really, a really spiritual or super religious person and feel like you're everything wrong in the book because you're not as spiritual, spiritually religious. These are This is the art of persuasion. The devil is always busy. He always makes people, he agitates failure in people. And because you are like, you could be like on a platform like me, somebody who speaks to people every day you know, on a, on a global scale. So it's for anybody. It's for anybody. It's whenever you see this video, it's for you. Okay. You could be led to, to refrain for a while to regroup yourself because little things kind of drain your energy. Like, like, like my throat being tight, being sore and you hear me coughing and things like that because it's itching real bad like that that could be like the cinnamon like if something gets in your throat a spice gets in your throat it can tend to make you cough a little bit that could be somebody's way of saying i want you to be quiet i don't Mom. all right son yeah 
But uh, again, with like, I feel like you're 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 led to be on your own for a while due to the spirit. You could be going through a spiritual transformation, like that butterfly. Whether you see it somewhere or it's just you see butterflies, or you just you constantly meeting, seeing like illustrations that has butterflies on it, or it's just the experience right now. You just feel. Like you're ungluing yourself to anything that has toxicities to it, even if it's somebody you love. That's just the bottom line. And someone thinks it's a it's an illusion to some because, wow, there's a lot. It's like there's a lot going on energetically. With I see a blender, you know, mixing things together. Someone's trying to entangle you and throw you into something that they're a part of that doesn't make a lot of sense. But while somebody's trying to be practice the, the illusions or practice the art of manipulation. You know, and somewhere in the process, you're in retreat and this person is trying to like wear a mask, trying to fit the bill in a scenario that just doesn't quite work. But a lot of it is conducive to you separating yourself because you're worthy of feeling it. So you unglued yourself from any experience or anybody and someone's going to try to take credit for it by saying, it's because I put that sentiment in a jar. Yeah, my, my shit work. And it's really not because that person, it's not going to change the person's emotional welfare in regards to you. They still want to find you for peace. They still, they still want to resort back to you for peace or the situation that they're in is still going to be toxic. So it wasn't the person that they think may leave or trying to isolate or alienate this person from anybody who this person loves. They will try to alienate this person from somebody. It's like, you could be, you could be led to just cut people off who are just emotionally, I don't know if it's a weakness or something. It's just cause I'm starting to get aggravated now. It's just like too much like clinginess or just like hanging on for dear life. And that don't make you know that that doesn't make anybody feel good. It's actually very aggravating where somebody's holding on to you for dear life. Then somebody's waking up to that. Like, I can't with these people. I can't with myself. I'm sick of myself. Waiting tonight. No. <laughs> you are getting away from people who are like devils in disguise. That's what it, it feels like that to me. So it doesn't shut me up. I'm going to continue to speak my voice. Okay. But what I will do is recite Quran. I do that all the time. Anybody who's trying to play God in their own life, okay, needs to listen to Sora Eclass. You can't really mute anybody who has the ability to say, Someone also could have been made to feel humiliated because they don't fit that bill or feel like they're made to feel like that isn't true. It's like agitation of failure. It's like somebody's deterring somebody from what God has invited them to with the open heart, with an open heart. Like they have an open heart for it or they're just open to learn about it. Or it's like, I could, uh, I can inquire about that kind of thing or learn a lot. They feel like somebody feel like they get a lot out of you. They have different, um, you have a multitude of different things that you learn and study and practice or things that you like to talk about. And there's things that this person learns a lot from you. That's just the bottom line. Because you're worthy of feeling good. And somebody is like lazy. I think somebody's met with a lot of laziness. Or realize the people around them is lazy. Ten of Cups. Somebody has, and on the bottom is a judgment card. Somebody is, is coming to the realization of what the pursuit of happiness, what it means to entangle somebody. Like somebody is could obviously be told a thing or two, maybe cussed out or something like that by way of vocal. Or somebody feel like you... Somebody could be internalizing something that you say or what you teach as if you're trying to say that they are uh, that they're being cussed out by you indirectly. Someone thinks that your content or whatever you do, whatever you teach is a dig at them. So now they're digging at you. They're trying to justify something. It's something in secret. Something they do in secret or they think somebody's being sneaky. 
Or someone could be hiding. Something with two faced. Somebody could be hiding. What don't come out in the wash always comes out in the rinse. Or somebody is, not, is blocked from your energy. As soon as I said that, the Seven of Wands came out with the moon. Whoever was playing with cinnamon, something with cinnamon. And the magician under the Ten of Cups. Yeah, somebody thinks they have the, the key to the to the streets in regards to what it takes to keep you away. Or block someone from benefiting from you. But did it ever occur to the person that you decide who benefits from you? Maybe the person assumes that you think that maybe the person assumes that they can just come in whenever they want to or something like that. And you put your foot down with them. And it's causing a tower. Somebody's reaping what they sow. And you got the five of pentacles. Yeah. So much. I just feel like somebody's trying to alienate you. And call you a Jezebel. Alienate somebody who they think is a Jezebel. Who just wants to pinpoint somebody as a Jezebel. But in actuality, it's pointing out the flaws in their character. It's like, it could be that the person is a stroke and striker. I got that energy a lot. This is like you stroke and strike, so you weaponize the same things that you feel like the person is going to somebody else to receive. You weaponize that very thing in your own social group. So now you're led to fast from whoever. It's like whatever the, the, the silly drama is with this person is not your issue. And now somebody wants somebody is a uh, is being. I feel like they're being patronized. They're being it's it's artificial though. With the Page of Swords, like somebody is, could be taking things from you. If they see that person is influenced by you, so they take things from you and try to instill it into their character like a shapeshifter. Something something like that. And the Fool. And the Sun. You are what makes this person happy. Someone is trying to shapeshift and, and assassinate your character all the while. Take things from your character. That person is such a a Jezebel or a prostitute or something derogatory in the book. And it's interesting that I use that term because the Knight of Wands came up. Is that they think that you're using, you're doing sadistic shit and using sex as a weapon. Somebody feels like they should do it. The Two of Cups. So in actuality, you this person, Two of Cups. Or you're a Two of Cups of somebody. And somebody wants to discourage you from feeling like you're anything good for anybody. But what good is that? What good is that going to do? Playing with cinnamon and coconut oil. <laughs> it sounds like why you clowning somebody with you? Because the people mixing spices and shit and writing shit on a piece of paper thinking that they got that shit from, from social media somewhere. Or did I, I don't know. Maybe there's something there. It's a ritual in it that they know it's in their bloodline that they do that shit to gain control. Like, fuck them. Centric said, fuck them. Let them worry. A worried person, a worried soul. There's somebody who's not resting in peace. Nine of Swords. Somebody does not want you resting in peace, but I feel like you sleep just fine. Like you get beauty sleep, as a matter of fact. I feel like you're focused on your rest. What's you know, at this time while you go through your transformation. Because that's that's a, a, a very draining thing. It can make you feel exhausted, but you are the sun is here. Somebody cloaks, sits in your energy. It's something about you needing to like stop other to stop certain people. If if your person is being two faced, then you have to stop with with that person. It's like it's a thing where it's like you stop you're stopping everything that that prevents you from wanting to be in union or to be successful. Like you gotta stop all the things that block you from having those things. Even if it means stop with the person or stop talking to the person. So you can get to where you need to be. So you can get to your ultimate destination. There's something like you've been, I feel like you spent a lot of time working on yourself or working on something that's creative and you're taking action on it. The Emperor and the Nine of Swords. And someone's worried that you're just going to be so big for you. You're going to get so successful that you're going to forget about them. 
if you're the only one over here working on something meaningful, I feel like you are always out of range, out out of their league, out of you're just a cut above. Like you're just out of it, not in an arrogant way where you're better than somebody, but you just aim for higher. You aim for more. You got people like assassinating your character or something, trying to take opportunities for from you. What the opportunities? Those opportunities are too small for you. You got the the realization that the opportunity that you tried to shoot for, or someone thought they could take it from you. They like this too small. They were too small and they're unaligned with where you're, you're meant to be. Like, I feel like you set out to do something that's entrepreneurial with the emperor. And say, for example, you may have a job right now where you may try to go higher in that job or go in a different, a better position. And you're meant to leave that job altogether. But someone's jealous. Someone's jealous of your shine or jealous of the way people take to you or just heavy, it's just heavy impacted. Somebody's riddled with jealousy, seven of curves. They're an illusion. Somebody's a liar. And now they're worried that with your absence is called a tower. Something backfired on some on somebody. With the Knights of Swords. Yeah, somebody played a very dangerous game at the expense of your character, and you were the emperor the whole time. With the Knight, Knight of Swords. It's like somebody... Hmm, like on this illustration, look like she's tying his hands and tying his eyes. Trying to trick somebody. So somebody could have been trying to trick the people about you. And get people to go against you. To get people to work against you. Awkward. I feel like you made it. Because you showed up as the emperor. The three of cups is under the emperor. Like you're happy all on your own. Like you always had it in you. To do things on your own. Like somebody is like. Two faced. And the, the, the part that's two faced. This king of cups under this nine of swords. Is somebody who's worried. About you. Because they made a, a vicious mistake. Being two faced with the people. Who was going against you. You sat with the people that said anything that spoke against your character and now you fake in love with them. It's like, is you're not in love with them or you just, you let your lovely one pass you by because you didn't, you took a stand. You're the emperor. You, you stood for, you create, it's a justice. The justice is under the seven of cups. This means whoever, whoever was attacking your person Naturally, you would pick up on it and they attacked you too. Or he sat in the face of people who attacked you. It makes him or her just like them. So either way, you're in a space where you already know your worth because you're worthy of feeling good. And you went about, I feel like you're on a broader scale of success. And that's true love. Because it's God's love or self-love or something like that. Something you know your value. Something about you knowing your value no matter what people say against you or come in to try to take from you. Or they feel like they took something from you where they have tangible, concrete proof and evidence to say this person's this and this person's that. They weaponize their own happiness against themselves. They cut their nose off to spite their face. So what it sounds like is you're led to keep an open heart, but leave leave it leave it leave the opportunity to create an opportunity elsewhere and i feel like it's like the energy and the way the most high the way the most high works he has a way of coercing people to go in a way where he where he leads them away from people who think they got it in a bag or just want to lie and be cowardice like you can't say you're a believer and just sit with the devil at the same time you see what i'm saying like that's that's what it's, so much of it sound like. It's like people think this; they think they can deceive the people, or if somebody thought they could deceive you and say, "Yeah, I'm I'm cool with you," and this and that and that and this. But go sit with people who are against you. Fake. You want to make them pay for it? I feel like you're making them pay for it. Even if they they they're gonna think they could just run back. Listen, well, like when they get it's something I get about fear. The Nine of Swords, when they get scared, they run back to where their emotional security is. With this King of Cups, that's somebody who's fair, just, mature. They run When they get fear, they get insecure, they get scared of what they are part of. They run to, to you for cover, and you're not going to be there. And that's karmic justice for being two-faced, for creating an illusion. Like, it's something that is not. There's no, there's, that's, 
two different energies. Because the Nine of Swords is this devil energy. That's worrisome, stress, anxiety, not sleeping. is something that's keeping this person up at night and you're sleeping peaceful. So the algorithm's off regardless. Okay. So, Pisces, you're in your comedic area. So you might be laughing at your own person. Okay. Because they did something crazy. Okay. Five of Swords, they defeated themselves. The house always wins. Like, they kind of bullied themselves out of for, for nothing it was all for nothing i heard i keep hearing it was all for nothing maybe they worried they're going to get that you're going to find out they was against you the whole time or with people who are against you the whole time or they were they're now worried that because based off how you're acting thinking or speaking they know you know more than what you let on and that's justice. That's game with the Knight of Swords and the justice. Like, you don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. So, until I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, until next time.